This is Neil Berman for the Unbutton at CES 2010. I'm here at uh, Intel's booth with Kurt Waltman, who's going to talk to us about uh, the Core i7 and 3D gaming. Hi. Hey, this is a, a new game that uh, we're featuring in a demo called Dirt 2. Uh, this game is running on an Intel Core i7-870 processor. This CPU supports a couple of new technologies. Uh, one is called hyper-threading technology. What that does is it uh, uh, enables each of the cores on the CPU to support two software tasks simultaneously. The Core i7-870 processor has four CPU core uh, cores in the CPU. So as a result, those four cores are able to support eight software tasks simultaneously. Um, the other technology that we're showing here today is called Intel Turbo Boost technology. This is a smart technology uh, which enables the CPU to effectively self-overclock based on how much it's being uh, used by the software. So as an example, some software only takes advantage of one of using one of the four cores. So what the CPU does is it automatically shuts down three of the cores and then that frees up uh, a, a number of things. One, it makes it more efficient because you're not using the three cores that uh, are shut down. The other thing it does is it opens up some headroom and just the remaining core is able to self-overclock uh, up to 3.6 gigahertz. Okay. Uh, so as a result, the software is intelligently adapting to the software demands that are being placed on it at any given time. Right. And, and, and and then the, uh, in terms of the 3D graphics that we're seeing, is there some pretty fancy uh, actual sort of graphics processing going on inside there? Or is that, is that on the processor? Or is it in discrete cards? So we're, we're using a pair of graphics cards that are supporting the rendering. The 3D is actually delivered by three components. Uh, it requires a 3D-enabled monitor. Uh -huh. It also requires the 3D glasses that you see a lot of people wearing here today. And then the third and, and uh, a critical component is that the software title actually needs to have been written to take advantage of the 3D capability. Um, many of the new games that are coming out today support a 3D code path. Uh, we happen to be using today a plugin by a company called uh, TriDap, uh, which uh, uh, is used by the uh, software title to do the, the 3D rendering. Right. And I've noticed the, the, the glasses that people are wearing are, uh, I guess, the sort of older style that I remember from seeing Jaws in the 1980s. Except uh, they're not red and blue. <laughs> right, they're not red and blue. And, and, and a lot of the other um, a lot of the other 3D demos that I've seen have used the, the real 3D system um, you know, that, that you see more in the theaters. Um, is, is it that you've, that, that you've just chosen for this demo to use this system? or um, I, I think that the underlying technology for both of those is the same. It's a okay. polarization-based technology. Right. There is a, a competing standard which uses a shutter technology. Exactly, yeah. The glasses. Right. Um, it seems that most of the CE companies are centering on the polarization uh -huh. uh, technology. Okay. All right, great. Well, thank you very much, Kurt. That was uh, Kurt Wellman. I'm here at the Intel booth at CS 2010. This is Neil Berman for the Unbutton, having a lot of fun doing some 3D gaming.